a marking here and this is a story from Zero Hedge again because it has to do with education, how much I hate the education system you know, how much I hate the people employed there, I hate the principals <laughs> goodness, I'm a terrible person if I say that stuff, you know, but this is by D. Tyler Durden, the school closures are a big threat to the power of public education okay, this is the first I'm going through this article, let's just see how it um, goes and this set is authored by Ryan McMicken via the Mrs. Institute, the Mices, the Mises, My Mices, I guess. I don't know. It's not Mrs., it's missing that address, so hey, whatever. 2020 is likely the watershed year for history of public schooling, and things aren't looking good for public schools. For decades, we've been fed a near daily data of claims public school is one of the most important. Again, it's not, man. This is terrible. Some, uh, I hope I'm not uh, misremembering. Some states can be arrested if your child doesn't attend school. I hope I'm not misremembering that. But anyway, we're also told that there's uh, not nearly enough of it, and this leads to demands of longer school hours, longer school years, and even larger amounts of money spent on facilities. Okay, so this is the thing. I do think teachers are overpaid, but then there's so much. Um, I would take my work home with me. Like again, I've worked in charter schools, and I would be there like seven something in the morning, leave close to five, right? And they don't pay you after four, essentially, right? And that's terrible, you know. That's terrible. That's how you're supposed to survive in these schools. And as you know, I told you about the kids. How horrible the the kids because. You know, I've touched upon it. For those who have listened, I've touched upon that stuff. And it's just, it's a lot of genetic stuff is there. And a lot of it is also cultural stuff. Like, less rap, more reading. Sorry. I can never see it because it'd be labeled racist. Oh, that's something the kids know automatically. Right? From second grade on, they know that's racist. They know everything is racist. You know, they know to throw those terms. They don't know what it means yet, but they throw it out because they hear it at home, by the way. Anyway, and then there's the all of the sudden with a pan panic over the pandemic is gone. Okay, I'm reading right now from the story. It turns out public school wasn't actually all that important after all and extended the lives of uh, over 70, um, 70 demographic ticks presidents. Yes, schools have tried to keep it up and reuse that students are diligently doing their schoolwork at home, but by April it was already apparent that old school model and public school doing public school via internet isn't working. Okay, okay and this right is important. Right, class participation has class by 60%. Students simply do not show up to the virtual lessons. Okay, so and this is another important stat many lower income households don't in, don't have internet access and puny equipment beyond their smartphones. Only 56% of households with incomes under 30%, 30,000 dollars, have a, internet access. Right, so I want to touch upon this specifically. Right, again, it's just my experience. Right, it. it these kids, they have all the fancy sneakers, okay? They, they well, quote unquote, they claim to have all these fancy um, cell phones and internet servers. They all want like iPhones, I think. I, I hope I hope it doesn't advance like something else. I like like iPads, but I think all they want is like iPhones and the latest iPhones. Is all they talk about, right? And if you. If you can have a a thousand dollar phone, right? How are you not able to get internet access for a year? If you have sneakers, Jordans or whatever fancy sneakers, how are you not willing to to, to again have internet access? You know, they get so much money from the American taxpayers, these communities, you know, and they just misuse it, you know. When I was in school, my my parents made sizable income, but I would I would never ask them for a jacket, you know. And then they they, 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 they it, once in a while they'll notice, <laughs> right? It's freezing cold sometimes, and up north the winters, I'll just have this like uh, <laughs> this thin windbreak on. <laughs> but I never complain because I always worried about spending my parents' money. Cause my parents were a bit um, cheap. And uh, my dad typically complained about money a lot, even though he made money. He just complained a lot. I, I assume my dad has nothing to do but complain. That's what I think. 
So anyway, I, I found this other nonsense, right? The article is well written, but just just this right here, it bothers me so much. Like the, the kids will use the excuse, you know, while we need public education because kids can't afford internet access. That's bull. That's bull. If you see a lot of these kids and all these uh, parents how they're dressed, it's BS, okay? They choose not to get internet access. They choose not to get a computer, okay? So anyway, like, uh, the okay, so let us start. Okay. Nonetheless, working class and low-income parents are likely to return their children to school when they open again. Attitudes among middle class will be a little different, however, by many and may be more politically dam damaging to the future of public schools. Like the lower income counterparts, middle class uh, parents have long uh, been happy to take advantage of the schools as a child care service. But the non education amenities didn't stop their middle class parents, especially those long embraced ideas of billion dollars spent school music pro programs, school sports, and other extracurricular ac activities are absolutely essential to the school, um, student success. Okay, I will say some parents. Do use the school system as childcare, and that's the problem. They shouldn't have children. Um, a lot of people that I've seen in these urban communities shouldn't have children, you know. And the children of uh, uh, how I say this, they're they're disasters themselves. And again, you see from early ages, you see who's going to be successful in life. You see who's going to be failures, and did, and nobody wants to admit these things. They all try to like hide it and lie about it. All right, but it's true. I personally believe like not all people should be in school. Some people should just be learning apprenticeship. I actually think apprenticeship is more important than the school system. And I will say, like, I went to college and I did learn things. Not everybody learns things, right? But I appreciate going to college. I appreciate it a lot. I learned something, okay? Alright, but if you want to get a job after high school, like an apprenticeship would be something more beneficial. Like that's why a lot of men I believe they've been rejected by college. Some of them are choosing not to go to college and they go into trade schools, and that's fine. That's actually smart. You don't get a, a, as much debt. <sighs> anyway, the I, I, I'm actually happy that um, again, silver linings. Step away from the education system. Public school system is full of indoctrination because it's been run by communists. Okay, and I truly believe you need men. Men will possess authority, but men also have the ability. Unfortunately, if there's men in the school system, they're basically uh, they basically uh, boiled and chained. They can't really express their authority because you have to get a lot of these boys under control. Now, I hate to say, the only boys, especially if these urban areas, they no respect and they're terrible and they'll fail in life. All right, I won't touch too much upon the article. Um, I'll leave it here. This goes into budget cuts. Well, yeah, they're gonna have to cut budgets, you know. Anyway, I'll just leave it here once again. But silver linings, public school system is a disaster, and, and the silver lining is less indoctrination. Yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, share, save, subscribe, thumbs up. Take care. Bye.